similar to those identities we had last week. I do not want you to look at this as I've got to memorize these three long equations. Because we really do not. Okay? Let's let's go through it piece by piece. Let's just look at the first one. Okay? First of all, it's just the Pythagorean theorem. Now, A in this case is not the hypotenuse because we don't have a right angle, so we don't have a hypotenuse to these triangles. Okay? And it's not necessarily the longest side either. Okay? A is, or whatever sides are here, whether it's A, B, or C, is determined by which angle do we either have or which angle are we trying to solve for. Because you'll notice that whichever side is over here by itself, if it's little a squared, then you're doing the cosine of angle A. If it's little b squared by itself, then you're doing the cosine of angle B. Same thing for C. Little c squared on the left side, but it's going to be the cosine of C. Um, so that's how you determine what goes over there. It's what angle are you either given, you're either going to be given angle A, or you're going to be solving for angle A. Um, and then this whole part right here, minus 2BC, well, that's whichever two legs are here on this side that are going to be added together. So if it's B squared plus C squared, then it's going to be minus 2 times C times C. If it's A squared plus C squared, then it's minus 2AC. Okay? Um, so as long as you know it's Pythagorean theorem minus two times b two times the cosine of the angle that matches the side that's on the left side, and I know that sounds way more complicated than I'm trying to convey it to be, uh, but I think that'll get my point. Okay, it's not really too separate. We'll end up being All right. So how do we use this? If we are given this information. Let's start with one where we are given two sides and the included angle. Okay, included angle, I mean the angle between the two sides that we're given. So we are told side A is 11, side B is 5, and angle C is 20 degrees. I think I did a little bit better job of this one being to scale. A is 11, B is 5, Angle C is 20 degrees. Okay. We cannot do the law of sines because we have side A, we don't have angle A. We have side B, we don't have angle B. We have angle C, we don't have side C. We can't do law of sines. So this has got to be a law of cosines. Um, now, because I am given angle C, that means that I'm going to use the version where c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of c. And I'm just writing it out for your sake right now to get you more familiar with it, give you that visual before we start plugging things in. Now, we don't know side c. We've got to leave that. We've got to leave the C on the left side. We know A, we're going to plug it in. We know B, we plug it in. Plug it into the 2 times A times B part. And we know angle C. Now, the nice thing is, on the right side of this equation, we don't have any more variables. So that means we can just crunch those numbers. Now. Go ahead and just type it in all at once. Okay, don't try and break it into pieces uh, because when people try and do that, they end up messing up the order of operations. So just go ahead and type all that in. 11 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 11 times 5 times the cosine of 20 degrees. Huh? Um, well, in this step, it really doesn't matter because that's not our final answer yet. But well, let's stick with three decimal places. Okay. So I just said it, but is that C? No. What do we have to do? Take the square root. Okay. We have to take the square root. And that should also make sense that that is not side C because this is across from a 20 degree angle and 
our other two sides are only 11 and 5. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever for this side to be 42.634. Okay? Um, I would do the square root of the answer again for accuracy. So our side C is approximately 6.529. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have solved for all of our sides. Now, in theory, we could do log cosines again to solve for angle A or angle B. But really, it's more work than we need to do. Now that we have side C, we had angle C, we can use the law of sines to solve for angles A and angles B. So that's a little bit less computing to do. So we're going to use what we know about C, the angle of 20, the side of 6.529. And it doesn't matter which one we do. Well, actually, it's best that when you have to find two angles, start by finding the angle across from the smaller side. Okay, so we're going to start by finding angle B. We're going to find the angle across from the smaller side. Um, there is a reason for that because with some of these problems there's more than one triangle possible um, but it's just easier um, you run into fewer issues if you start with the side across from the smallest or the angle across from the smallest side so cross multiply divide Personally, when I do this, I try and keep the numbers in my calculator. So when I'm typing this in, I'm going to do 5 sine of 20 divided by the answer. Okay, It's not a big, huge deal if you round it, but it is more accurate if you just keep the answer running through your problem. And then same thing here when you need to do the inverse. I would do the inverse of the answer. So 15.2 is approximately angle B. And then all we have to do, and that makes sense, it should be smaller than angle C because side B is smaller than side C. And then all we have to do is 180 minus 20 minus our 15.2 and get 144.8 degrees and that is across from the longest side so we're good okay so you may want to write this note somewhere on your paper but when you have to find two angles okay when you have to find two angles in a triangle or we're getting ready to do an example where we've got to find all the angles always start with the smallest one always smart start with the smallest one because um, there are a few if you don't your calculator will give you an error okay and there's a reason for it which is not going to give you the explanation okay so always start with the smallest one Okay, let's do an example where we are given all three sides. Okay, we're given all three sides. So we are told that side A is 9, side B is 7, and side C is 5. And we've got to find those three angles. So, what I just said was we should start with the angle across from the smallest side. So, we need to do, we need to use the same form as what we just used. We should solve for C first. 
because angle C is going to be the smallest because side C is the smallest. So side C is 5, A is 9, B is 7, A is 9, B is 7. I don't know angle C. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second and let everybody catch up because these are the ones that the majority of people make the most mistakes on. Here's why most people make mistakes on this one. Because this 2 times, in this case, A, B, cosine of C, that is one term. All those numbers are connected to each other by multiplication. So that is one term. Most people make the mistake of doing all of this and multiplying it by the cosine of C. You cannot do that. Order of operations says that you do uh, parentheses. Well, we don't have any of those. Exponents. So we would need to um, evaluate our exponents right here. 9 squared plus 7 squared. Then you've got multiplication and division. Well, multiplication is right here. All of this is multiplication. Addition and subtraction comes last. So if you end up putting all of this together then you're mixing addition and subtraction with multiplication. Um, and you can't do that. So when we are solving this, we can't just type everything in at one time. So here's what we've got to do. We've got to do all the numbers individually. Um, so 5 squared is 25. 9 squared is 81. 7 squared is 49. 2 times 9 times 7, let's see here, 9 times 7 is 63, so 2 times 63 is 126. And it may be helpful to you to, to kind of keep a little, little line under that or, or something to just draw your eye to, I've got to keep that together until the very end. That's going to be the last thing that I deal with. Okay? So let's see here, 81 plus 49 is 130, right? Yeah, 8 plus 4 is 12, yeah, okay. Again, that's got to stay together. The next thing that I'm going to do is subtract the 130 from both sides. I cannot do 130 minus 126. 126 has a variable stuck to the end of it. It's like you can't do 130 minus 126x. Most of you are pretty good about not doing that, but a lot of people will do this. It's not any different. So that's negative 105 is equal to negative 126 cosine of c. Now you can finally separate those. Divide both sides by negative 126. I'm going to keep that because then I'll do the inverse cosine of 105 over 126. And that will give me the angle C. Yes, that was lengthy, but you've got to do it sometimes. And you probably could have combined a few steps, but I just wanted to be very explicit the first time that I was doing this for everybody. So angle C is approximately, we'll say, 33.6 degrees. I don't know that there's ever a case where you have to do the law of cosines more than once. Once you do the law of cosines one time, you then have enough information that to solve for the rest of them, you can use the law of sines. Okay, so now we know everything about C, so I'm going to set up the law of sines with C, and I'm going to go to the next smallest side, so I'm going to go to B. So I'm just going to kind of condense my calculations here. Cross multiply, 7 sine of 33.6, divide, 
that is not my angle. I have to do the inverse. 